Well, hello everybody, Michael Spray Jones coming to you with another video. Now, I've had a number of people ask me a question on soil gas control under slab, of course, and the use of spray foam closed cell, obviously. Now, open cell foam is not going to be used to control radon, although it is an excellent air barrier material uh, it stops air infiltration. It's not going to provide the air permeance and the vapor permeance needed. Plus it's compressible. Uh, it absorbs water and it's going to be crushed. So it is a big time no when dealing with something under slab where concrete is going to be poured or, or even in high humidity crawl space situations where you're really wanting to control what's going on. Uh, but BSF and Huntsman have both put out documents showing the testing on their products, uh, the heat lock foam to name one, and BSF's wall tight. Uh, both their generation ago and the newest generation that have come out since 2023 have testing and certifications coming. The old products did, where when applying uh, as little as 25 millimeters or one inch of closed cell foam over top of rock, is going to control uh, radon. Now, this is sort of a no-brainer. We're already controlling uh, water movement through one inch or even two inches of closed cell foam. We're thermal insulation, but we're controlling water vapor permeance and water movement from high water table to, to low dissipation. And we're already an air barrier system, an air barrier material, and we have certification in Canada for that. Requirements in the US are not quite the same to have uh, certification numbers on air barrier materials, but the, the foam absolutely does. And that's just due to air leakage. Air leakage through the foam is tight enough to qualify as an air barrier material. So when you combine water vapor permeance, the Euro, Euro vapor barrier, and you are an actual air barrier material, then when you're applying it at sufficient thickness, we're talking, you know, an inch or greater over top of the rock or over top of just the, the soil, uh, you're going to have the approvals to be radon control. So here's here's generation ago uh, document the BSF had produced just on their uh, wall tight CMO one. Now they're dealing with V5. They've gone back to the the fifth generation foam. But it's just talking in Canada that the National Building Code requires wall, roof, and floor assembly separating the building uh, from the ground to be protected by an air barrier system. So right there, air barrier system. So usually what they're going to be doing is put poly down and then to make it a system, it's going to be taped and sealed at all the penetrations and all the corners. So that means anything coming up through the middle, right, for plumbing, uh, through the middle has got to be sealed and then the edges have got to be sealed at the slab. So air barrier system, wall tight meets the requirements of an air barrier material. So when it's applied, over top of the footing at the slab, the spray foam will seal things. Here they're showing a flexible sealant to seal the slab. And here they're showing that if you rolled the foam up and then poured the slab into the assembly, uh, it's going to seal all of this. So we have been doing this for years. You know, we've got open face situations in a crawl space where the spray foam is just being put over top of the rock. The crawl space is not going to have a gypcrete or any additional coating over top of it. Many times that will satisfy uh, your local building codes because crawl spaces have exemptions depending on height and what goes into them. So the spray foam does not need to be covered. So the foam can be applied directly over top of a granular fill. Now I prefer in crawl spaces to be spraying to rock. And here's the reason why. When you guys are out there, Canada, US, and you're saying to your client, you know, we can take care of your crawl space. If you are having mud, if you're having clay, uh, it's going to retain an awful lot of moisture. And you've got to wait till the surface of the clay dries up sufficiently that you can put the spray foam on. Likewise, if you have loose soil, you know, a mixture of glacial till or something like that, there's an enormous amount of water that can be retained in that assembly. So if you have high ground table water or you've got poor drainage around the structure, the water gets underneath the crawl space. It it uh, it can get the first three to four feet quite saturated, and then it, where is it going to dissipate up into the crawl space? And you can have a heck of a time trying to get the first 
inch or two to dry up sufficiently to put your spray foam down. And you say, well, what does that really matter? Well, when isocyanates come in contact with moisture, they form carbon dioxide. So water and isocyanates form CO2. CO2 is gonna puff and blow the foam uh, off the substrate. So when you're trying to put it down over this damp soil, the reaction is actually counteracting you and blowing it up and off. So your foam is gonna hump, it's gonna lump, it's gonna be excessively bumpy, and you're gonna have a tough time getting it to stay down and uh, stay in contact with ground. Now, is it absolutely critical for the spray foam to be in perfect contact with the ground? No, not at all. I mean, we know that ground shifts, we know that ground sell settles, but as much as dependent on you, when you're putting it on, you obviously don't want these great big um, irregularities of of the foam doming and humping and, and not wanting to lay down because it's going to be slow progress you're not going to be able to get your requisite amount of foam you're not going to be able to make it look like anything you're not going to be able to get it to lay down smooth and then if anybody goes down in the crawl space you got all these voids they walk on it, it's going to halt be hollow they could even crunch through break the foam so it's just it's an overall installation people are not going to like it most people when i'm talking to them about a crawl space they want to know that they can go into it walk on the foam, not damage it, go in, do routine maintenance, have somebody come in, do something, and get back out and not damage the foam. It's not supposed to be a, a one-time crunch and wreck. So, have crushed rock. If you're having your crawl spaces done before they're putting the floors on, there should be some sort of crushed rock. And the reason being is that a three-quarter or a one-inch uh, rock will allow the moisture, uh, it's like a honeycomb, uh, network it's going to allow the moisture to stay down in the soil and it's going to allow a little bit more air a little bit more uh, ventilation around the rock itself to dry up it's easier to dry up crushed rock than it is to be just drying up soil because the more you put air across soil the more it wants to wick moisture from down below so these are a really good method if you're going to go in and put spray foam down in the crawl space, have the crushed rock, then you can go and put your one or your two inches down. If you get an excessively chunky rock, it can be really hard, like if you're getting a riprap or a two inch rock, like a very coarse um, type of fill, it can be very, you can soak up 30, 40% more spray foam trying to get that sealed. So watch out for that. That one can come to bite you in the butt. Plus if you put it on thin into the fissures and into the, into the undulations, of the spray foam or, or of the spray foam trying to get into the rock you may not get things sealed up and there might be little voids and then it isn't sealed perfectly so a three-quarter to one inch crushed rock is ideal i do not prefer sand people might say well what i know i just put sand down sand is loose when you have a thousand psi uh, pressure coming out of the gun you hit the sand the sand's in your face it's blowing every which way and you can't get things sealed up well so you want some type of soil that it isn't going to be high water table, isn't going to absorb it. And I find that the number one medium material to go over top of this is crushed rock. Now, we have done numerous crawl spaces uh, and under slab situations where, due to the soil conditions, due to what is underneath and in the irregularities and how the water table is going to be high, we've had people put down sacrificial OSB plywood or OSB oriented strand board. Now you've seen this in some of the videos and you're like, what the heck is going on? Why spray John spray into OSB? I don't get it. It's because they either are doing a uh, hollow floor so that the, the floor is sitting with a space between it. It's sitting structurally on piles and there's gonna be a three or a four inch gap between the underside of the slab and the actual soil. That way the soil can heave and move up and down and not affect the slab. That's called the structural floor or you have a situation where high water table things are wet they can't dry things out in time so rather than trying to deal with that they're going to put down uh three eighths or quarter inch osb and then from that that's a buffer that is a sacrificial layer so that the moisture isn't affecting the foam it gives us a nice perfectly smooth substrate to apply the foam get even coverage on and then at that point all we're doing is we're trying to get our one or are two inches down, and then they can bring in the rebar, in-floor it if they're doing in-floor heat, or pour concrete over top. Now, in certain situations where the spray foam is not to be covered in a crawl space, we might put the plywood down. I've had people do that. Very wet crawl space. All the water on the building went down into the crawl space. It was like a swimming pool. It was incredibly wet down there. There was no chance of them drying that out in two months, and they needed the, the building closed up. So they cut sheets of uh, one eighth 
or quarter inch actually particle board uh, like a paneling board put those down into there over top of all the wet soil and at that point we had a dry enough substrate that we could spray the foam the foam wasn't lifting you had to overlap the panels a lot so that um, you had sort of a uniformity you didn't want to leave gaps uh, to the panel where there'd be moisture and then you just went at it you put a skim coat over top of it and then you built up your secondary your, your primary coat and the first coat would hold it and sort of lock it in place like a glue and then you went and put your your primary coat over top of it and it worked really really well so you've got to if you're a spray foam guy you got to think ahead as to what time of the year you're going to be putting this down now, soil gas control is a really good method you've got an air barrier system in the huntsman product you've got an air barrier system in the wall type product bsf uh, if you're in the United States, you can get BSF, you can get Huntsman, and most of the other suppliers will have their air barrier testing uh, done on their foam. They certainly are going to have their vapor permeants, and you've got a closed cell uh, rigid insulation that can go down. So absolutely the spray foam becomes a uniform, seamless, monolithic, airtight barrier under the slab or within the crawl space to control the gases and the moisture and the thermals that are coming up and through so it's a very good highly effective way in fact i've got most people now if the timing of the year will work if we're not trying to do this when it's excessively cold or rainy uh, they prefer to have spray foam in the crawl space and the reason being is that it's warm and dry at the same time and then there's just there's no smell and people can walk in there they can go back down in they can lay on top of it it's actually quite comfortable to lay in the crawl space you know you're not laying on rock so trays that are going in can have room to move around they're not breaking it all up provided that they're not jumping down into it and they can seal the crawl space up and the crawl spaces then are very very warm you're not dealing like with a permalon liner it's all got to be sealed in around the edge and that that's fine but that's a lot of work it's timing specific it has to be done they have to be able to get the liners down in before the floor system can go on provided we have four three and a half to four feet of height inside the crawl space we've got plenty of room to work we can go in there and spray after the floor system has been put on whereas they really can't get the liners in there uh, with the floors on so we've gone in sprayed crawl spaces later on in the builds put heat on put air on down there to get things dried out they've got the crushed rock we can put the foam over the rock up to the side of the walls and then the crawl spaces are warm, extremely warm. Uh, warm like people have never experienced because you've got insulation over top of the ground as well as maybe up the grade beam or the footings and what have you. So absolutely closed cell foam can do it. Um, the reports are out there. Most of the suppliers now are getting official testing done on it. Not only do they have the prerequisite requirements in air barrier and, and vapor permeance testing done, but they're actually going after specific uh, air barrier certification numbers with ULC and ASTM. Uh, BSF's just bringing that out now with their V5. If you're onto the V5 system, great system out there. BSF had it with the CMO1, the previous generation 4 foam that they had. They had the ter certification. They're just transferring over and getting that officialized on the V5. If you're already spraying a Huntsman product, you know, heat lock, they're going to have it and do have it and they've got a lot of documentation to back it up so you can give it to your architect your engineers your building officials and what have you so yes the foam can do it yes it's a really good way to proceed i would get this done just be careful what materials you're putting in the crawl space and time of the year that you're going to be doing it at because you don't want to put yourself into a compromised situation where you're holding the building up for some reason and now it's going to be really difficult to to get the product installed because of water or because of the substrate that you've chosen so Give that some consideration so click on the share like and subscribe leave me a comment or a question if i missed something here kind of rambled on do this off the top of my head so we'll see if i've covered off the information that you would want to know and we'll catch you on the next video